In the launch videos for Houdini 20.5, they showed a way that you could create a wet map using the new Copernicus. So I wanted to show how they went about doing that. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. So if you wanna grab it and dissect everything, kind of go node by node, then you can definitely do that by grabbing that file. But I wanna point out that this is not a technique that I created. This is from the actual short film that they had created for 20.5. Um, it's basically straight from that. They did a talk on SideFX's YouTube channel, which I'll leave a link to in the description. And they kind of go over the setup, but they don't do a very good job of explaining kind of how it works at all. They just show a couple of screenshots. So I wanted to show how they did it because it took some finagling to kind of figure out what they were actually doing. So, and they also give credit where credit is due because they have some code that was given to them by someone else. So uh, I don't want to, you know, claim any of that. This is solely based off of their setup and what they talked about in that, that talk, but I wanted to go in more detail for them. So let's drop down a, not a SOP import, but a cop net. We'll dive inside here and we'll drop down a SOP import. And I'm going to just create something very, very basic just to show you how this is done. Uh, but you can definitely get a lot more complex with this, but I wanna make sure that we don't lose anybody. So we're just gonna create something super, super simple here. So let's jump into the SOP import and we're gonna drop down a grid. And I'm gonna set this to be a two by two, just so that we're in that negative one to one space. But the orientation, everything doesn't really matter as far as you know making it match what a, a normal grid and cops looks like. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, I have a video or a, a series talking more about uh, an introduction to cops, so watch that. But the the grid orientation doesn't really matter in this case, as long as the grid for this is matches the or the the two models that we're pulling from match. So that'll make sense in just a second. But let's drop down a UV flatten node, and then I'm gonna just jump out and make a copy of this. We need some UVs to work on for this grid or for the object. Uh, that we're, we're you know, working off of for the wet map. So let's dive back inside here and I'm going to delete this. So this is where I say that everything has to match here. So this object in here needs to match exactly position, orientation, scale, everything is the one in here. So I would just object merge them over, but since they're just grids, I'll just make a copy of them and then we're good. So let's drop down a pop net because this is what we're going to use to you know, create the wet map. We're gonna have some particles moving around and kind of creating a wet map here. So let's dive inside here. And I'm going to drag this up and just change our birth here. So I'm gonna set this impulse to $FF equals one, just so we emit only on the first frame. And I'm gonna set this to like 30. And I'll turn down our constant activation there. Let's drop down a pop wind and make sure that that is actually piped in. And I'm gonna crank up the amplitude a little bit. Let's make sure that they're not moving too fast and they should be good with that, so we're good. Let's jump up and let's drop down an attribute wrangle to make sure that these particles stick to the surface. I'm just gonna set them, their Y positions equal to zero. And now if I, cl if I click play, they're just, you know, all at Y zero, they're just kind of moving around, which is what we're looking for. Now, if you actually had a undulating surface, you'd want them to stick to the surface. And there's other ways of doing that. But for this case, we're just gonna make them sit on Y zero since that's where our grid is at. And then we need to change these to a VDB. So we're gonna do a VDB from particles. And we don't actually want this to be a distance VDB. We're gonna want it to be a fog, but let's dial in our size here first. So. We'll take our voxel size and let's set this down to like 0 0.005 and change our point radius scale to 0 0.01. Just to give us some small particles, make sure that your voxel size is smaller than your point radius scale. Otherwise they won't show up and we'll get some errors there. But let's change this distance VDB to a fog and let's rename it to surface just for consistency here. And let's jump out. And then we need to rasterize this input here. So. Let's do a rasterize setup. And we don't want this to be a position, we want this to be UVs. And this is just gonna give us this. And then let's go ahead and rasterize that again with our rasterized geometry. 
wire that into the geometry input. And I don't want the alpha. I want to grab the original position value here. So let's take that and wire that in or paste that into our name and change this from mono to RGB. And then we can drop down and open CL node. And this is where all of the magic is going to happen. So we're gonna take our signature here and we need to make sure that our source is the right thing. So let's set this to an RGB and we can wire in our original position for our source. And then we're outputting a value called DST, but we need to import our service volume here, our BDB. So I'm gonna give us another input here and I'm gonna call this surface. So the same thing that we have named here needs to match what our actual fog VDB is called in here. And I'm gonna take this and change this to a geometry and we're going to wire this on in. So now we have everything that we need in order to actually work. Let's go ahead and take a look at our node and we get an error and that's because we need to do a few things in our kernel, so our code. So this code was, like I said, given to them and that made the, the short film um, by someone else. So definitely go and watch that, uh, that video. I can't remember who it was, uh, but go and watch the talk where they, where they talk about it because they give credit where credit is due. Um, and definitely this is not something that I created. But let's go ahead and paste in that code. So this is the code that we have. And I just want to give a brief kind of rough understanding of what this is. I am definitely not an OpenCL master, but I have a basic understanding of what everything is. So we have this bind, which is basically our import here. So we're importing what we have set up in our signatures. So we're binding in a layer called source and it is optional. That's what this question mark means. And it is a float three value. Then we're binding in another layer called DST. Uh, it's mandatory, so we have this exclamation point. I forget what the ampersand means, uh, but you can look more into that. It's just OpenCL code. Um, this is gonna be our export, so this is gonna be a float. And then we have a third layer that we're binding in called, that is a VDB surface, and it's going to be a float value as well. So from there, we're going to create a position uh, float three called position, and we're going to set that equal to source. So our source that we're importing. So that's gonna be our original position. You see that we're already working. Uh, but then we're gonna create a, a float called sample, and we're going to sample the surface of our VDB at the world position of our original position or our, our source position. Um, that's my basic understanding of that. And then we're going to export that out. And that's going to give us this. So if I go ahead and press play, we have the start of what a wet map could be, but there are no you know, wet map trails that are being created by this, but we do have our particles moving around. So that may be useful if you wanna do certain things, there's probably easier ways of doing this, but that's one way to do it. Um, so let's go ahead and drop down a null and we're going to wire in our output into this null and let's call this out underscore wet map. And the reason that we're doing this is because there is no solver inside of COPS yet. Um, and I couldn't figure out, a, figure out a way to do this all in SOPS because it would work faster if you could do it all in SOPS. Um, but I, I couldn't figure out a way to do this all inside of SOPS. And the way that they did it was outside of, of SOPS anyways. Uh, so let's just cover that. In the future, if there's a solver inside of inside of COPS, then you can probably do it all inside of inside of COPS without having to jump back to um, the geometry layer. But let's drop down a SOP import here. We're going to dive inside there, and we're going to drop down a COPnet, and we're going to click Use External COP, and we're going to bring in that wet map that we just created. So if you don't know how COPS works, it's a 2D volume that you're actually working on. That's how it's all working internally in Houdini. It's similar to like a height field. So you can actually use volume SOPs to work on these, these values. So we're going to do that. We're going to drop down a solver and we're going to dive inside here. And let's drop down a volume mix. And we're going to wire in our previous frame. We're going to wire in our input, which is our current frame. And we're gonna set the mix method to add. 
jump up here and I can press play. And now you see we get the basis of a wet map going here. So let's jump back up here and let's just rasterize this down. So we'll do a geometry to layer, to wire, or to um, rasterize our volume down to a layer that we could actually work with. Um, and then obviously we have these, you know, stepping going on. So we could do in our solver, we could take our sub steps and we could crank this up to like four or something. And now they're a lot smoother, but you see it's a little bit slower. So another thing that you can do, depending on your scene, you can either up the sub steps or in this case, at least in this case, I should say, you can either up step or increase the sub steps or you can come into this stop import here and we can drop down a trail node. Let's just look back at this and we can set the trail length to something larger, maybe like a hundred or something. And then we can drop the trail increment down quite a bit. So maybe like 0.1. And now we should have a lot smoother of a, of a setup here. Let's jump back and we're on one sub step in the solver here. So if I press play, it's running a little bit faster and we get, we get rid of that stepping, which is kind of nice. So that's really kind of the basics of how we can go about creating wet maps inside of the new cops. You can use VEBs to generate them. And then this OpenCL code is really where all of the magic happens. So props to the, the person that came up with this, because this is, is super cool. This is a great way to import, um, you know, import VDB surfaces into into COPS and, and work with them, or into OpenCL in general. I'm assuming this would work inside of SOPS as well. This sort of a thing would work, um, but I'm, I'm not really sure. I haven't tried it. But it does definitely work inside of COPS, and you can create some cool web maps with it. So. Like I said, this is based off of, this is basically the exact setup that they did for uh, that short film for the Houdini 20 launch video stuff. So look at that talk. They definitely go into a lot of different things and it's, it's a great talk to, to listen to, but they show some of this, but they didn't, like I said, go into a detail on how like the nodes work. They just showed some screenshots and stuff. So I wanted to break down how they actually went about doing it because it, it is a little bit uh, complex if you are just trying to, to recreate it from the nodes. But anyways, hopefully this has helped you out. I have a bunch of other videos covering some of the new stuff inside of Houdini 20.5 on my channel. So if you want to learn more about Houdini or Houdini in general, I have a bunch of videos on Houdini just in general. You can check out some of those videos, check out the new stuff in 20.5. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.